In the headlines, civil servants call off neutrality allowance strike. FDA shuts down East Legon Mawako fast food restaurant to investigate alleged food poisoning incident. Minister of Finance briefs Ghanaians on the upcoming African Development Bank meeting in Accra and responds to questions on the economy. Majority of Abosokan's spare parts dealers ready to relocate to Afienya. Those who refuse to move will not be forced to move. 15 regions record no case of COVID-19 a month after easing preventive measures. And in politics, the PNC has announced the dismissal of David Apasera and Moses Daniba for alleged misconduct and embezzlement. <laughs>We start from the public sector where the three-week-old strike by members of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana has been called off. The strike was to put pressure on the government to pay the neutrality allowance it agreed in January to pay civil servants for not engaging in partisan politics. At a press conference in Accra today, Isaac Bampoado, Executive Secretary of CLOSAG, explained the reason for calling off the strike. Directive by the National Labor for the Minister of Finance to give payment instructions to the Controller Accountant General has been complied with. So we are calling on this time. And we expect all our members to go to work by Monday. This is a game. It's a game. We are on half time. They are going to the drawing board to strategize. We are also going to our drawing board to strategize. And we don't give our game plan out. Spectators can make all the noise. But you, the technical man, you keep to your game plan. So we are keeping to our game plan. In health news, the East Legon branch of Mawako fast food restaurant was today closed down by the Food and Drugs Authority following allegations of suspected food poisoning. Some customers who patronize the East Legon branch of the restaurant during the weekend have complained of food poisoning. I went there with a friend Saturday, say 4 30 to 5 pm. They have the combo pack, so it was rice, food chicken, and then the coleslaw. So we had right there, we didn't even take it home. So Saturday it was okay. Till Sunday around the after 12 pm, that's when the symptoms started. So even with my friend, he actually started having like the run stomach from Sunday morning. So he thought it was just like, you know, normal stomach upset, so it would be fine. So it got serious during the day, so we had to like get meds from the pharmacy. But still, it wasn't getting any better. So we had to actually go to the hospital on Monday. So we were there throughout the day, and then we got back home um, like that evening, that's Monday evening. So we had to get uh, medication like drips, whatever drugs, run some tests as well. So that's where we found out we had some infections from what we ate. Because before, we didn't even think of it like that. The only food we ate on Saturday actually was the food from Morocco and everything started. So with me, I was actually vomiting and then, like having diarrhea, I like, was back. So let to try to patronize the facility. And we, as part of the investigations, the facility was shut down to continue with the investigations to establish what the causes are, if any, and to establish whether the food, uh, alleged food poisoning really occurred at or emanated from that facility. So it's a routine exercise. You close down the facility, you go into the investigations, and when you are done, uh, you can take a few steps to restore uh, the appropriate processes in the place. So we reached out to some of the big teams at the hospital. We were given some two hospitals, so our team has visited the patients there in the hospital. We are also in touch with the medical team in those hospitals, finding out what complaints were brought to the facility and finding out from the patients what they consumed at the restaurants when they did that other issue. So we are in touch with the company. Meanwhile, Morocco has explained that it has identified 53 customers who have been affected and have absorbed their medical bills while the restaurant is still cooperating with the FDA for investigation. So for now, we are investigating. As I indicated to you, you know, there is a proximity, a period that it has started. In the morning to, let's say, 3.30, those who bought food at that period did not complain anything. But those who bought the food from 4.30 down to the evening around 10.30 were those who were complaining. That is on Saturday. And then on Mother's Day, on Sunday, that is where the number is huge. The same thing, in the morning, from, let's say, in the morning where we started, 
to let's say 330 nobody complained so we are looking at all this investigating and very soon we would come out with a press release to indicate to the public what really happened what we know based on professional advice and based on medical reports and based on the report that some of the i mean the the victims would would provide to mawako the minister of finance ken Oforiata, today gave a briefing on the upcoming African Development Bank annual general meeting in Accra from May 23rd to 27th. The minister used the opportunity to explain what the meeting will mean to Ghana as the host as the world tries to recover from the COVID-19 crisis. The minister also responded to some questions on the economy, including the JAPA deal, e-levy and other issues on the economy. Um, so we look at now um, and the AFDB um, having its annual meeting here and as luck will have it, uh, we had it last year but it was virtual uh, and then the shareholders and governors decided that you know um, we should continue uh, and have the next one here um, which will be physical um, and so there we have it. So the 2022 AGM is significant as it is the first physical meeting since 2019 Therefore, we must take advantage of this seminal AGM to advance discussions on building resilience, addressing financing gaps, and narrowing the continent's physical and digital infrastructure deficits. Um, as a privileged host also of the AFCFTA, we are also providing the opportunity to advance the cost of economic integration in response to some of these challenges during the annual general meeting. Uh, but nobody likes to pay taxes, so it's always difficult. But I think we all begin to get used to it as we apply the use of the taxes for the citizenry to see. Uh, we should be launching um, the U-Start program and the 10 billion CD historic program um, starting in June, and we'll be able to see immediately the deployment uh, of those resources you know, to this team in mass of some 11 million youth to get um, uh, enterprise, employment, um, support for the youth um, so that we become the entrepreneurial nation and that we've advocated for. And to Abosokai in Accra, spare parts dealers operating in the enclave will not be forcibly ejected, contrary to concerns by some of the dealers. Today, the Abosokai Spare Parts Dealers Association said the intended relocation being facilitated by the Greater Accra Regional Coordinating Council was optional. The co-chairman of the association, Clemens Boatin, spoke at a press conference today in reaction to an earlier one by the concerned Spare Parts Dealers Group last Tuesday. The landlord or those who have put up shops here uh, hide under the compound of an association that is known as the National Concerns Purpose Association and then to just into the eyes of the public that Abosua crime is being possibly ejected from here to Athenia and it was incumbent on us as an association, as a secretary association to come and set the record straight that nobody, nobody, nobody is being possibly ejected from here and that the project that the government wants to initiate you know, it's an optional project that you can choose to go there and then can also choose to be here. So we had to come and set the record straight. We bring you an update on COVID-19 in Ghana where the active case count has dropped to 47. A month after the easing of the preventive measures, including the wearing of face masks in public places, according to the Ghana Health Service. From the COVID-19 updates by the Ghana Health Service, all 47 active cases were located in the Greater Accra region, with the remaining 15 regions of the country having no active cases of the illness. The country has 72 active cases and 13 million vaccinated persons when the revision to the COVID-19 prevention measures were announced by President Ikufuado on March 27. Since then, the country has administered a million more doses. In politics, the General Secretary of the People's National Convention, Janet Nabla, today announced the sacking of the National Chairman Moses Daniba and the 2020 flag bearer, Mr. David Apasera. At a press conference in Accra, Ms. Nabla said the dismissal 
was over allegations of misconduct and embezzlement of party funds. Court's ruling on the matter brought against the party by Mr. David Apasara and Moses Daniba next concluded that the duo have violated Article 14A of the PNC Constitution following their patent for breaching the constitution of the PNC, a behavior that has been, that has obviously disrupted the pursuit, the pursuit of our collective goals and drilled the progress of the party, the memberships of Mr. David Apasara and Moses Daniba have been terminated. News and Brief was brought to you by Graphic News Plus. Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly, and annually and access free news on various interest areas as well. Visit us on graphic.com.gh for further information. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. Thank you for watching. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at Graphic GH. I am Juliet Echa Safo. Subscribe now.